Well, I'm somewhere different today with Taz. We've got a very exciting day. I've got some special guests to show you, some new people that you've not seen on this channel before. We're actually meeting some Enduro riders today. I'm very excited to show you how they train and what they get up to on a test day. And I've also got a new gimbal, which I'm very excited to try, so I can hopefully get some steadier footage. So I'll go have a watch and um, see what we can see. Did it myself, bought a bike, and then kind of had a few good people helping us out, um, kind of telling us, pointing us in the right direction. But yeah, literally just bought a bike and cracked on. You know, I would clear eyes and crash my brains out. But I did alright. I finished fifth at Esberg, starting from the second row, which did alright. Finished fifth. I should have, I, I could have, I should have, but you never know. The anti had bollocks should be your uncle, wouldn't you? But um, my chain came off and I lost about half an hour. Yeah. And it was like touching ground. I might have been on the podium if I had that. It would have been close anyway. I was in fourth and I was catching third pretty good. And then my chain came off. Wrapped on the front sprocket, so I took the swinging arm out of my bike. So <laughs> still got fifth. From, starting from the second row, um, which is like five minutes behind like the front row. So that kind of got the factory's attention. Yeah. And then I was like pretty much from then I'd signed for the factory, but I didn't actually start until the next year. Yeah, right. So I was like literally 12 months into riding an drill bike just on a factory <laughs> team. Not having a clue what I was doing still, like, I was so dangerous. It's just a crash my brains out. It was, it was fast learning curve, I <laughs> And it wasn't on properly. This is the difference between world class enduro athletes and BSB racers. <laughs> BSB racers aren't allowed anywhere near the bikes. This is probably why. <laughs> First question is ask him if he's ever done any tarmac bike stuff or get him down to your dad's school at Silverstone. Nah, I never have, but I would like to. I think I'm a bit big to be any good, but I'd like to have a go, definitely. We need to get you on a track day, I'll... Do some sideways action anyway. Yeah. Smoke some tyres. <laughs> Not for me, able-bodied, never mind like this. But honestly, just don't understand it at all. I think back to my trials, my trials riding career that lasted about a day. 
It's like mad how they're getting over some of this stuff. But it's cool to watch. It makes me feel good just sat here watching rather than actually attempting to ride it. The little kid is riding around that would put me to shame, big style. There he is. Have you got any plans to do the Dakar? Uh, no plans, but it's definitely something I would seriously consider doing in a couple of years' time. Um, yeah, like I say, no plans, but I've got a lot more into it over the last few years, and uh, it's it's not a firm spot on the bucket list, but it's definitely uh, in my radar, that's for sure. Have you ever done any rally type stuff? No, I've never done rally, but I went to Dubai on holiday, end of 2020, Literally, it was when COVID was happening and there was lockdowns in England and whatever. So, me and Oxy just decided to go to Dubai on holiday because from there we could decide, see if, South, if COVID restrictions were worse in South Africa or England and then decide where we'd go for Christmas. So, yeah. in Dubai in like December time, planning to go on holiday, and then just by fluke, all the Dakar boys were like in town <laughs> that week and then got in touch with the Husky dealership and they're like, hey, there's a 450, just do it. You won't bring it back when you leave. So we're there for like two weeks. I think I rode for like 12 days just in the dunes <laughs> and stuff with the Dakar boys. And, uh, I'm brilliant, Roxy, but you love that. Best holiday ever. I'm, ha more, I'm, I'm keen to go back. Um, so again, it wasn't on a rally bike, but it was uh, in the dunes with the proper doers. And yeah. I was uh, as enjoying it. I remember the first day I went out, rode around a little track first day, and then next morning, we're like, oh, uh, I think Sam Sutherland was like, oh, we're riding tomorrow. Someone was like, we're riding tomorrow. Meet here. Like, they go proper early there for the sun, so we met at like half six. Remember just riding on the tarmac and turned off into June and I'm like looking around, it was like Toby Price, Sanders, Van Beveren and Sunderland and I'm just like, oh. I think I'll just hang at the back and follow for a little bit. Um, but it was sick, they're all sound guys and actually really enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. So yeah, so probably still a couple of years away. I've definitely got races I want to win in hard enduro first, but yeah. um, I definitely wouldn't say no to it. Cool. How can he eat prawns, drink coffee, and then go ride motocross without throwing up? Well, he's obviously an avid vlog watcher. Yeah. I can't even remember what vlog that was. I don't know. Although I, did, I had a McDonald's on the way to the track yesterday, and then a coffee, and then a Fanta lemon, and I felt a bit sick actually when I did. <laughs> I was complaining yesterday, wasn't I? So I went a bit steady today. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't worry too much. <laughs> Next one is if you're trying to cook Roxy a romantic dinner, what's your signature dish, excluding Greg's? Roxy's not a big Greg's fan, to be fair, so well, the Greg's is all for me. Roxy, what do you like? Fajitas? I do a good fajitas. To be fair, I don't follow much instruction or much of a pattern, but it usually turns out alright when I'm in the kitchen. Can you cook? Fair. I can. can. You can cook fajitas and that's it. F*** off! What more would you need? I can survive, put it that way. <laughs> yeah. I can survive. Is trials experience necessary for being successful at Enduro? Uh, I don't think it's it's not 100% necessary. There's obviously riders that have been successful without it, but I think it does help. Um, not just endure, it just gives you such a good base of kind of throttle control, feeling for the bike, feeling for the terrain also. Reading the terrain, I think, is one of the biggest and like most overlooked skills you develop from it. Obviously, 
you walk every section in trials and when you get to a high level like you spend a, a long time walking the section and like understanding where there's grip and where there's not yeah so if you arrive to like an enduro section and you, you just look up straight away and you know right there's grip there that tree root's going to be slippy whatever i think it just the whole process just happens faster so i think um it's definitely not essential but it and gives it you such a good base for any more even motocross like you can see corners you see how lines develop and stuff like that just just by reading the terrain obviously as well as the the clutch and control throttle control yeah. all of the rest you benefit from it so um but at the same time you spend the entire time going slow steady in control yeah everything precise and there's times when you you know in the enduro world motocross world where there's you kind of need to forget about that and there's, there's times when being precise and being perfect isn't the fastest way so it's gives you a good base but you've also got to know there's a lot of other things to learn as well I yeah. think is the key Congratulations on your 2021 championship. Have you ever considered doing Erzberg? Will you be at Hawkston and have you done Western before? Erzberg? If he's a recent, <laughs> if he's just a recent fan, Erzberg actually hasn't happened for the last two years. It thanks, might be, that's why. Thanks to it? the old Covid. Yeah. So now nah, I've done Erzberg every year until the last two years because of Covid. I've never actually done that well there, to be honest. I mean, I, I had two fifths and a fourth, I think. Um, which obviously isn't bad, but I feel like that is the one race which suits me down to the ground. Obviously, it's short, it's intense, super technical. Um, it, it ticks all my boxes, and I've just never really had a lot of luck there. Twice I've, I've been there pretty injured, which hasn't helped. Um, so I'm really looking forward to going back next year. Well, this year, fingers crossed, all being well. Um, I think everyone's kind of looking forward to going by no one really knows what to expect it's been that long since we were there i yeah. can't even really remember what the place looks like um so yeah i've done it before uh western i've done twice also couldn't do it last year because i had a round of the world championship um but i believe this year doesn't clash with anything so there's potential to be back on the beach it's one of my favorite races definitely one of my favorite races in the uk anyway it's a it's a really cool event yeah <laughs> You get one free, no? Uh, it's a start. It, it took you a ticket, right? It's a ticket. 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 It's a all, all, all the toys that it was, um, some toys that it was in the shop, and my dad said, if you want the, um, all the toys, um, for tomorrow, um, um, for um, for the gasolina for um, for the fuel. Hey, um, quieres juguete? Yo compro. Moto? No hay dinero. Está bien o no, Billy? Sí, sí. Claro, tío. I was the same. No Christmas presents ever. Only fuel. Billy, the bikes. That's it? Si, si, nuevo. Yo te hago una tarjeta, ¿vale? ¿Quieres tú luego al bar? ¿Cuándo cuando acabes? When you finish, you go to. Okay. Y a Johnny le importas tú a una tarjeta. Now I come to Leslie. Ahora le importas tú. Gracias. Gracias. And then the last one, which is just from me, is what do you do? Well, this is just a practice day for you today. What, how do you structure your day normally? Or what do you do? 
with or is there a, a lot, structure? With not a lot of structure, as most people that are around me con constantly butt the head, bash their heads against the wall because because of it. But um, no, nah, I struggle to be honest with too much structure. Um, the kind of world we're in, especially with the last two years, thanks to everything Brexit and COVID all together, things have been so difficult to plan and stuff like that. But at the same time. I'm kind of lucky in the sport I'm in, which we don't need too much structure because there's that many kind of element elements to hard enduro and super enduro, which is obviously what I've done today. I can kind of get away with doing anything and it be yeah. considered training really. So I kind of just go with the flow. I'm, I, I like to ride more than I like to do anything else. So if the weather's good, if if conditions are right to ride, then I'd choose to go and ride and I'd ride twice a day rather than going to the gym once yeah. a day. Do you know what I mean? I, I'm, I way prefer riding, obviously. There's times when you're in England or when the weather's bad or whatever, then you can't ride. So then you've kind of got to do something else to subsidise your time and to yeah. kind of keep your fitness in. But but I definitely uh, favour riding over anything else, whether it be hard enduro in the mountains, trials, super enduro, motocross. Obviously, when I'm in England, motocross is still pretty new for me coming from trials. So I um, I enjoy that. I've still got you know a lot to learn and I see improvements kind of quite often in motocross and, and stuff like that so I do enjoy that a lot and I think it is great training more than just a lot of people realize from the speed side of things I think your, your kind of cognitive function and your processing of things and, and the way you ride a bike I think improves a lot so I'm pretty lucky I can just about get away with anything and consider it training yeah. well in my head I consider it training and so far it's been working out so until I, until there's a problem I'm not really going to look to change it I'll be I'll be here there and everywhere well from one country to the next just about really well just on that the last thing was um i felt like i perfectly planned my trip over here with every single form everything and then we got here and i just asked you what you do and you just said you just turn up and go for it <laughs> so <laughs> i know for next time that where's, where's a will there's a way you get here one way or another <laughs> and once you're here you don't have to worry sun's out all day yeah living the dream all right well thanks very much Billy. no problem thanks for coming it's nice right. to have you yeah sorry you uh, trip hasn't quite oh, gone to right. plan but yeah. maybe you can uh, swing by a few more times as a motocross track yeah. or we're here most days so we'll do some more videos sweet all right cheers bill no problem thanks boxy see you later